So for extremity simulation, the first thing we're going to go over is a prone L-spine. You may or may not be seeing prone nail spines in your clinic. This is something that historically has been treated as a pretty standard treatment. When you get a patient prone, as we discussed last semester, you want to have something relatively comfortable for their head. This is our prone pillow. Not every prone pillow is the same. Not everyone has a prone pillow. Not everyone uses a prone pillow. But if you do use a prone pillow, make sure that you have them positioned on the prone pillow properly. The slope of the prone pillow should fit against their chest, and their forehead should be near the top. And if your patient has arms, they will reach around kind of like this and cradle it. That gets their arms out of the way for anything you've got going on down here, and gets their arms out of the way so you don't hit it with the gantry. You do not, however, want to have something akin to that. Don't do this at home or in the clinic. Make them on the prone pillow. Because if you do this, maybe tomorrow it will be like this, next day it will be like this, and it's going to stretch them in different ways. You want to have them reproducible. You want to have them be able to be in the same place, in the same way, every time. So if you have this up against them properly, in their forehead against the top of it properly, you will be able to reproduce this position. Now, if you're going to treat the L spine, you want to get them ballparked. You want to get them straight to begin with. You don't have a crotch, a xiphoid, and SSM to work with. You do have their hiney to work with, and you should be able to, on most people, feel their spinous process. So you're going to use the laser right through their butt crack, and then you're going to be able to put a finger on each side of the spinous process onto the musculature that runs right up a person's back. And you'll be able to see if the spine and the laser are running in line with one another. This doesn't work on someone who is extremely uh, kyphotic or scoliosed. Uh, if they're really kyphotic, you're not going to get them prone anyway. If they're scoliosed, it's going to be difficult to get them straight with the laser, but you get them as straight as you can. A straight patient in a simulator is easier to reproduce in a straight fashion in the treatment room. So you always want to get your patient straight for every simulation. That aids in reproducibility. So now that we've got the patient straight, we're going to do like a lower L-spine simulation. You've got them straight on the table. You're going to bring the patient in. You're going to put the CR such that you're kind of centered on the spinous process. You need to know from the physician which spine you're trying to treat. If he tells you you're going to do an inverted T, you may be down this far and you will end up blocking here and here to create an inverted T where you'll treat the SI joints and the lower L spine. Either way, you have to find out from your physician or know from your facility's day-to-day -day operations how they want to treat this. As we've discussed, sometimes you'll treat a spine to a depth of 5, which gives us an SSD of 95. So I've set 95 to the PA. I missed with my tape, so we'll put a new piece on. So since I've got a 95 SSD set, your width is going to be such that you're going to be out near the iliac crest, running right in the middle here. So, 95 is set, you've got your field size ballpark. We're going to now run out of the room, we're going to fluoro this. You're going to make sure that you've actually got the spine in, you're going to adjust it out to where the appropriate number of L spine are included in the field size, in your entire SI joint included in the field size as well. You may have to adjust the field size accordingly. Once you're sure of where you are, call the doctor. The doctor's going to come in and make his adjustments. Once he says everything is good, notate everything. There are at least three things that you notate on every single patient before you run back in. You're going to notate your collimator settings, so what field size it is, the collimator angle, gantry angle, 
table settings. Where is the table in space? In, out, left, right, up, down. So, collimator, field size, gantry, table. That's actually four things, but I include collimator angle and collimator settings as one. So, collimator, gantry, table settings, every time. We'll go over when you leave things out until you take another set of films and when you don't. In this particular case, it's a plain PA field, so you're going to notate everything. You're going to notate your vert, lat, and long for your table. You're going to notate this was my collimator and gantry, and this was my field size, and then you're going to come in the room. That should all take a lot less time than it took to explain it. So quickly notate everything, come in the room. And then you're going to mark your patient before they have a chance to move. Double check your SSD. If the patient was moved in out, your SSD due to the slope of the patient could have changed. Double check your SSD and make sure it's exactly where you wanted it to be in the first place. We're going to pretend we were perfect and we didn't move this patient. So I've marked this. Now that you've got it marked and you know you've got the correct depth set, you're going to take your film. Put your film set in. Set your image intensifier. You're going to center your II. Set your correct TFD. Put a marker on the film take your film. Once your film is run, get it approved. Once the film is approved, you can make other appropriate marks on your patient. In this particular case, I would mark the superior, inferior, and since we're set to a depth, you can also set your laterals. I don't know if I'm hitting the right spot. Excellent. Yep. Give yourself lateral marks as well on both sides. That way you can get the patient rotated correctly. A three-point setup is always more stable than any other setup that you're going to do. So you've got your patient marked. Your field is your field has your film has been approved. So in this particular very simple simulation, we're pretty much done. You're going to take your patient out. You're going to if your facility happens to tattoo before the patient leaves, you're going to give them tattoos. If not, give them uh, semi-permanent marks. You're going to cover them such that they will be able to be on the patient until they come back in next time. Educate the patient on their marks and what to expect. Take your photographs. Get them out of here. So just as it was with last time, you're going to get photographs. You're going to get an AP. You're going to get a lateral. And you're going to get a full body. You're going to be able to see, especially on this particular case, when you take the full body, make sure you know what position her legs are in if she had legs. You're going to want to see what position her arms were in because her arms are going to be up like this. You want to be able to see all of that information on the picture. You want to be able to see at a glance where everything is. Okay? So, that's a very simple one PA field bone mesh simulation. In the next video, we'll go over extremities. An addendum to prone on a belly board. Normally, you're going to have some kind of scale on the side of the belly board. You want to also notate where the laser falls in conjunction with your lateral mark on the scale. What that's going to do, let's say this one's 22 or 21.5. That's going to show your therapist exactly where the person was on the belly board. So if she's too far up and you are lined up with the tattoo and you're at 28 instead of 21, you know you need to move the patient inferior on the board, go back to the laser, and you're going to be close to your mark. That tells you where in out you are on the board. Bear in mind. You don't have to be exactly on this scale. You are not treating the board. You're making sure that this person is within about a centimeter in out on the table properly. Nobody really cares that it was 21.6 or 22 or 21. As long as it's close, you know the patient is properly on the belly board. You need to line up to the marks on the patient then and ignore it from then on. You just need to know that you're on the table properly. Since we're not, this board is not what's being treated. This patient is. Having said that, this allows your patient to be on the board properly 
But once you've got them on the board properly, you set them up and pretty much ignore it from then on. Thank you very much.